All right, so in this video, we're gonna add some formulas to our worksheet using VBA code. Let me demonstrate what the end result should look like. So I want to go here and add a formula here that will just calculate maybe this multiplied by 0 0.2 and then we'll drag that formula down and then we'll go over here and add a sum function to sum up this entire column like this. And then just to make sure we have another type of formula, I'm gonna do an if statement over here and I'm gonna say if this number is greater than 1000 comma, then we're gonna say large, otherwise we'll say small. And then again, we'll drag this formula down as well. So let's get started. I'm gonna delete these two columns here. Go under developer, open my Visual Basic editor, add a new module, insert module, and create a new subroutine. I'm gonna call it add formulas. Just a name for this. Now the first step should be for me to go to this G2 cell and just add the formula to that cell. So I can do that by doing range G2. And here you have a few options. You can do formula, for example, and make it equal to, and that should be the formula text as string in quotes. So my formula was, if you remember, equals to, and it was this cell, which is F2. And then I believe I did multiplied by 0 0.2. So that's basically my formula text right here in codes. So if I run this, we should see we were able to place our formula here in the cell. We are getting our results. So if I double click here, you'll see now we have a formula. I'm gonna erase that and go back. So once we have the formula, we probably want to drag that formula down. So the way we're gonna do that, we again gonna select the cell that has the formula that needs to be dragged down. This range will have a method autofill, which is basically the official name for dragging things down. And then you have to do the destination range where you want this to be dragged down. So for me, that's gonna be from, if I look here, from G2 through G16. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do range G2 colon G16, close parentheses. So now again, if I run this code, you should see that we were able to put the formula up there and drag the formula down. Now let's try to add that if formula here in this H column. So to do that, it's gonna be again, very similar with a little twist. So first I'm gonna do the H2 cell and then do dot formula equal to, and here we have to provide the formula in quotes. The problem we're gonna have here, so let me just do the formula here as a comment so you can see. So the formula that I want here is equal sign if, open parentheses, and then it's gonna say if G2 is greater than 1000, comma, then I want to say large, comma, otherwise I want it to say small and close parentheses. So this is my formula text. The problem with this is because this formula has this double quotes in it, if I put it right in here, it's gonna break my text notation and that's gonna create a problem. So for that reason, what you have to do, you have to escape all of this double quotes in your formula and you do that by basically just doubling every double quote in your formula. So I'm gonna go inside of this formula of mine and double all the quotes like this. So I have four of them, I'm gonna double all of those. Now once I have it doubled, that's basically the way to escape that in our string notation. I'm gonna copy this and paste it within this quotes. And now that should work. So if I run this, 
see we have this that says large and now again we need to drag that formula down which we can do pretty much doing the same thing so I'm just gonna do this auto fill and then the range we want to drag this down to so that's gonna be from h2 through age 16. So again if I run this it should complete all of those steps so the last thing I wanted to do, I wanted to sum up this G column. So that's going to be in this cell G18. So let's do that. So I'm going to say range G18. And here you can do dot formula. You can also do dot value. So value is just a text in a cell, but because it's going to have an equal sign, it's going to interpret that as a formula anyways. So basically, if you do dot formula or you do dot value, you're pretty much going to get the same result. So I'm going to say that should be and my formula text. So the formula I wanted there should be sum from G2 through G16. So again, equal sign is necessary here to make sure it's a formula. So G2, G16. Let me just delete these and rerun this code. We have all our formulas, we autofill them down and it works. Now the next step is gonna be to make this code more dynamic because right now this code is only gonna work if our data has 16 rows. Just to give you an example, if I, let's say, didn't have this last three rows and I run that same code, see it's still gonna drag it down to the same place and it's gonna put the sum in here, but I want my sum two rows down from my data. So I'm gonna delete this and try to fix this issue. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna find the last row. And you should know how to do this by now. So I'm gonna do sales.find method to get the last row. Again, tons of different methods to get the last row. This is just one of them. So we're gonna start our search from the first cell and we're gonna look in formulas a partial match. Okay, that's that. I just wanted to make sure I got that right. So the search order should be Excel by rows, comma, and the next one is gonna be the previous. And we'll do match case as false because we don't want the case sensitive match. That should get us the last row of our data before we even start. So just to troubleshoot this and see what's going on, I'm gonna do just F8, F8. And right now if I roll over, over this LR, you'll see it's empty. And if I run this again, F8, you'll see it gets me this, which is not correct because again, this is something I do all the time. I forget to get the row from this and this is why testing is a good idea. So I'm gonna stop it again and run it one more time. So F8, F8, F8 and now if I roll over it says 13. I'm gonna reset this which is the correct last row. So now that I have the last row I'm gonna have to think what I'm gonna have to change. So this one that's gonna go to G2, it's gonna go to G2 so that's gonna be the same now this autofill range, instead of going to 16, it has to go to the last row. So I'm gonna remove that 16 and concatenate that LR to it to add the last row outside of this codes because it's not text, it's a variable. So that should get us that 13, that's good. Now this thing again, that should be okay. It's gonna go to H2 cell. Now this one, instead of being 16, is gonna go to our last row. Now the next one is this, which is the formula, and that should go to 16 again, and this whole thing is our formula text. So I wanna make sure instead of the 16 in our formula text, we find the last row. So I have to get out of this text, 
put my variable in here and get back to this text again. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna exit out of that text and then add an ampersand to add to this, the last row. And then I'm gonna get back to my text and then that last row is gonna be the 16. So I'm gonna remove all of that and keep the parentheses closing. I forgot to do the ampersand here. There it is. So that's gonna be our beginning part of this formula, this text. Then I'm gonna add the last row. Then I'm gonna add parentheses closing. So that should get us the correct formula. Now we also have to make sure we put that formula in the right cell because the cell where it should be in, if we're in this data, we want two rows down from the last row. So if the last row is 13, I have to put it in 15. So that means instead of this that says 18, I need to make sure that I switch this and I'm gonna concatenate again. And I'm gonna do the math right here in parentheses and I'm gonna do LR plus two. So I want to go two after the last row. All right, let's try to run this code and see what we get. It seems like we're all good. We have our formula in the right cell. We drag it down correctly. Let's try it on a different tab. Now we have more data. Let's try it again. And here we go, it works. So again, we're able to get the last row and use that variable in our advantage going forward in our code. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you here is that when you set formulas in VBA, there are two ways to set a formula. There is the regular way to set a formula, which is with this A1 notation, when you do A1, B2, F2, etc. And there is the second way. So if I change this period and start typing formula, see there's this option R1, C1, there it is. Instead of F2, because I changed this to R1, C1, now we can refer to our cells as a relative cell reference from the current formula cell. So if I'm trying to write this formula in this G2 cell, I want to say F2, which is the cell one column to the left in the same row. So what I'm gonna do to do this, I'm gonna do R, which means the same row that I'm in, and then I'm gonna do C, and in square brackets, I'm gonna do minus one, and that means the same row that I'm in and one column to the left. So if I run this thing, let me actually just get rid of this first. You'll see it works, see exactly the same way. It's not gonna put that R1C whatever here, it's still gonna do F2, but in this notation, we can use this row column notation to do this. Now, if I wanted to go one row up and one column left, then I would have done this. So row negative one, that means we would refer to like this cell, which we probably don't wanna do, but just to show you, let's actually do that. Now that's gonna give us an error because we're referring to this cell and we're multiplying that by 0 0.2. But now it goes, see one row up, one column left. And if you wanted to go, let's say one row down, you would do R1 instead of negative one. And if you wanted to go right, you would do C1 instead of negative column, or you can do two to go two columns this way, that way. I'm pretty sure you get the idea at this point. So if I run this again, see now I'm going one row down and one column left. I'm just gonna switch this back to this, that's RC minus one. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because when we record macros, this is the way macro recorder is gonna record most of your formulas. But most of the time when you create your own stuff, you're probably never gonna use this. So you can just go with your A1 notation and make it happen with using dot formula instead of using this dot formula R1, C1. But that's pretty much all for this. So that should show you how we put a formula in the cell and how we just drag the formula down, 
how we change something to go dynamically to the last row. So now we can run this. And here we go. Works fine. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.